Welcome to Textination. We're speaking with Steve Potash, the CEO and founder of Overdrive, now Rakuten Overdrive. Thanks for joining us, Steve. Thanks, Fred. Delighted to be here. Give us uh, some background, first of all, really a long, interesting background of what Overdrive is all about. Certainly. Well, Overdrive is a company that's best known for partnering with all of the nation's public libraries and providing them the ability to serve readers of all ages, access 24 hours a day to download best-selling eBooks, eBooks you can read on the screen, on a phone or tablet or e-ink device, and audiobooks, audiobooks that you can download and listen to on your smartphone, MP3 players, or at the desktop. And even with some of the new advances in our, our award-winning app Libby for ebook and audiobook, I'm delighted to say we recently added support for Apple CarPlay. So now everyone on their commute to work uh, can enjoy a access to a free digital audiobook from their local library. Sounds really awesome. Tell us uh, more about the background, how this got started. Well, thanks, Fred. As, as I've been a lifelong entrepreneur, it was in the late 70s and 80s when the first early personal computers came out and text on screen became a reality that I envisioned one day all of the books that I was using in building my business or pursuing my education or career could be electronic on a screen. And we founded the company and approach publishers to convince them that if they would allow us to scan and digitize their print books, we could make electronic publishing products for them to sell as a new revenue stream and outcome for the investment they made in that great intellectual property. The book would live on a screen, and those were the earliest days. And I'm proud to say that I work with some of the biggest New York publishing houses in the 80s, putting books on floppy diskettes at the time, loading them in one at a time. And by the time CD-ROM entered the marketplace, you're familiar with the encyclopedias, the encartas, and a lot of the CD-ROM multimedia discs that came out. Overdrive was active and evolving digital books for CD-ROM with trade publishers, reference academic publishers. And by the mid-90s, when the advent of the web and online access to books and content. This is when Overdrive had the opportunity to significantly change the way all readers, consumers, students, business people, travelers could discover and instantly access almost any book, anytime, anywhere. So that's a long history. In the last 15, 20 years, Overdrive has been at the forefront of many of the biggest innovations in promoting consumer discovery and access for popular books, New York Times bestsellers. Uh, myself and our company were one of the creators and founders of what was the open industry standard for ebooks called EPUB. It's kind of like the MP3 for music. So we've been at every stage of evolution of popular ebooks, and I'm proud to say here in 2019, it is almost a overlooked benefit that every American has. As a taxpayer, as a member of a community, we all are entitled to use a free public library card. And each and every library in the United States has a wonderful growing collection of almost every popular ebook for adults, for teens, for children and now an extraordinary collection of similar audiobooks that are available for free. The app Libby is free, and with the library card, access to these huge collections of best-selling ebooks and audiobooks for every part of your life, it's all available for free. So it's, we're still on this journey, and uh, it's a great time to be helping to promote access to books and reading. You've talked about it some, but uh, tell us more about the platforms you're available on. People can actually, even though in a sense, uh, I suppose they're a competitor, they, you, can, you can read these uh, Libby eBooks on, on a Kindle as well? Correct. In the U.S. 
So first of all, the Libby app is available in the iOS store, in the uh, app store for Apple and, and iOS. Uh, it's optimized both for iPhones and iPads. It's available for all the Android platforms, including students on Chromebooks, but it also works natively in the browser. So even without an app, uh, users can just go to LibbyApp.com and get almost exactly the same ability to find their library, enter library card, download and enjoy ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, and more. But in the United States, because there is such a um, adoption of the Kindle e-ink reading devices and also use of the Kindle uh, app from Amazon, Overdrive enables uh, U.S. Uh, public library card holders to borrow a ebook from any public library and have the option of having that borrowed digital book sent to their Kindle account. And when a consumer borrows an ebook or audiobook from the school or library, it it's typically comes with a lending period, 14 or 21 days. Whether they borrow and open it and it syncs across all their devices where they left off reading or listening, at the end of that lending period, the file automatically checks itself back into the collection or makes itself available for the next user. If the user says, I want to read on my Kindle, they have that same lending file access on their Kindle device or in their Kindle app. So for the 14 days, it would be available alongside the box they bought from Amazon on their Kindle shelf as a loan from their library. And at the end of the period, it would disappear. And you're actually working with uh, the vast majority of libraries, public libraries? I'm proud to say, Fred, since we introduced popular ebook lending to public libraries in 02 and 03 now, 15, 16 years, Overdrive is available in over 95% of every public library in North America. So I, regardless of where you are, if you install the Libby app, the first thing Libby will do is ask you if you have a card. If so, tell us your library and you can just put in your zip code or the name of your city. Or Libby will say, let me find your library using the geo services of your uh, smartphone. Um, so there's a significant uh, coverage for almost every zip code in the United States. And I'm proud to say in over 30 major markets, we partnered with those institutions, such as Los Angeles Public Library or here, Cleveland Public Library or, or other markets. If you don't have a library card, Libby and the local library will allow you to use your mobile phone number and instantly apply for a digital card you can instantly use to start to download a bestseller or get a book for your trip or something for your commute. So we have that instant digital card option available in about 35 major markets. Well, congratulations on that success. And we should mention uh, that uh, you actually were acquired as a company just a few years ago too, right? Yes, in 2015. Uh, we were acquired by a public Japanese uh, innovation and e-commerce company named Rakuten. And Rakuten is a powerhouse e-commerce innovation and technology company based in Japan. But they are a global uh, uh, collection of world-leading technologies and apps, including Viber, which is a messaging uh, communication uh, based out of Israel, they also have uh, Rakuten Rewards here in the U.S., formerly known as Ebates. But Overdrive is a specialized B2B institutional business, and we still operate as a standalone uh, company dedicated to the mission of public libraries, um, our schools, and serve a lot of government institutions. But we are now part of a, um, a large uh, global network of tech and innovation companies. Your latest innovation is bringing this to Apple CarPlay. Tell us about that. Thank you. The Libby app, which has been out now two years, has revolutionized the ease of discovering that your library offers you, your family, your children, your career, any kind of digital book, anytime, anywhere. And Libby last year was named one of the top 10 apps by Time Magazine. For 2019, Libby has already received awards, one of the top apps from PC Magazine. But just in this last update, we added support for Apple CarPlay. 
I am sitting now in one of my uh, engineer's uh, cars, uh, VW uh, Tiguan, and on the entertainment screen, I'm looking at Libby and the books that are on the Libby bookshelf, no different as if I was looking on my iPad or looking on my iPhone. Because of the uh, CarPlay integration in Libby, <laughs> the app appears and is fully accessible through either the touch screen or the voice commands or the navigational uh, uh, features on the steering wheel. So I could get in the car, instantly continue where I left off with my audio book. Should a phone call come in, it would pause, allow my uh, hands-free uh, phone call to occur, and then continue where I left off. <clears throat> and with CarPlay, the user, the driver, has all of the conveniences of navigation, uh, skipping a chapter, um, as well as something that most users like, and that is adjusting the speed of the playback of the narration. For some long books, maybe you want to listen to a book at 1.25 or 1 1.3 uh, normal speed to kind of get through a 10-hour book in maybe six, seven hours. All of these features are available through CarPlay, similar to using the app, the award-winning app in my hand on my phone. Terrific. And I think maybe we can actually hear an example here. Fred, I'm putting on speaker, and now we're going to, I'm on the dashboard. We're going to play a David Baldacci uh, novel called Memory Man. He should have pulled his phone and hit 911 at that very moment. He knew better. On the dash, if I want to skip back 15 seconds, I just touch back 15 seconds. If I want to speed up this uh, narrator, I can click the speed. And here, let's go a little faster. So all of that I was doing touch screen on the um, large entertainment screen, seeing Libby, Memory Man, David Baldacci, uh, all of my controls, how much time is left in the chapter, elapsed time. And as I, as I would get out of this car, go back to my uh, den and then say, continue listening on any device operating Libby, it would pick up exactly where it left off because CarPlay Libby syncs uh, a user's bookshelf, uh, reading position, and all of their reading preferences. And again, this is all free for consumers. It's a terrific thing. <laughs> this is 100% free. It's free from the app, is free at the app store. And all you need is a library card. And the public libraries have very well-stocked collections of all the bestsellers. Now, just like in a public library branch, when a new bestseller comes out, the library may buy a limited number of copies, let's say 10 or 20 units. And those first copies may be borrowed. The same thing operates in Libby in the digital world. If you get to the library and all of those titles are already on loan, Libby allows you to instantly place yourself on the wait list. And as soon as a copy becomes available and it's your turn, it shows up on your bookshelf with an alert. Your book is now available. So users are either borrowing titles that are instantly available and enjoying it and also adding themselves into the holds or the queue for many popular books that come on a frequent basis. Because the instant someone is done with the book and they click saying return, that unit then becomes sent to the next person in line. Or if a book just hits the expiration date of let's say 14 days, those titles 24 hours a day are constantly turning over to serve additional uh, readers and, and, and listeners. And are, are there certain numbers of books uh, as there are, I guess, with, with print editions that you can have out at a time? Yeah, that's a good question, Fred. Each library sets their own lending policies. So what's pretty typical is for digital books, public libraries will allow a user with a single card to borrow maybe 10 to 20 at one time and possibly put themselves on a wait list for, let's say, 20 to 30. So it is quite a dynamic and extraordinarily valuable in a way for 
anyone interested in books and reading to take advantage of the investment their community has made for their benefit with um, mostly taxpayer dollars. So it's, it's, it's a great underutilized uh, service we are excited to promote and, and, and share information about. And we should mention that in addition to Apple CarPlay, you are available also on Android Auto. For more information, where can people go? Well, the uh, website is meet.libbyapp.com. And there they can actually try it immediately in the browser and simulate and find their library. And of course, that will link them to either the Apple App Store for iOS, to the Google Play Store. And by the way, we do work with Android Auto in a similar fashion to CarPlay, or to the Windows Store for Win 10. And as I mentioned, LibbyApp.com allows them on any tablet or browser, many of the new IoT refrigerators. I would imagine you'll have your recipes and your audiobooks playing on the front door of your new uh, kitchen refrigerator because we also work in almost any web browser. But meet.libbyapp.com is a good starting point to uh, find the best ways they can enjoy, and that will help them find their library and in many markets, give them instant access to a library card. Well, congratulations on what you've created here, Steve. Steve Potash, thank you for taking the time with us. My pleasure, Fred. Thank you. Now this. How many companies out there have continued to innovate when it comes to building a better radio? I'm Fred Fishkin, host of Textonation, and I'm here to tell you about the new CC SkyWave SSB radio from the wonderful people at C-Crane. Bob and his crew really love radio, and it shows in this new compact model that is packed with features. Beyond great AM and FM reception and sound, you can tune into shortwave signals from around the world. Listen to ham radio operators, aviation, and more. It's the radio you'll turn to every day, and in emergencies. It will run for nearly three days on just two AA batteries. Pair the sleep timer with the new Soft Speaker 3, and you've got the perfect radio for your nightstand. Of course, it can wake you up too. Click on Ccrane at textination.com and put in the code textination for a free flashlight with your order. They love radio, and you'll love Ccrane.